To click a well exposed and sharp and professional image, there are two ways in this DSLR camera. One, go and hit that auto mode button and you get a beautiful image all by its own. Second, if you want to go the manual way, well, you have to have a clear understanding of aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And if you want to understand that, I'm going to explain that right after this intro. So I'm going to explain what is aperture in the simplest terms and in the simplest ways. Aperture is somewhat like the pupil. So just like your eye, the pupil in the eye dilates and constricts depending on the light. If there is too much light which your eye cannot take, your pupils are going to constrict. And if there is very less light, you enter a dark room or something of that sort, then your pupils are going to dilate and let more light in. That is exactly what aperture is in a camera. Aperture is controlled by aperture blades in the camera and you can see over here. Now, there are two functions of aperture. One, it lets the amount of light in and give you that bright image. And second, it also adjusts the depth of field. Now, let me explain aperture as denoted in the cameras. Now, in the cameras, as you can see, the, the aperture is denoted by F. It's called the focal ratio. Now, let me ask you something. Is f by 2 higher or f by 16 higher? Don't go by the numbers because generally you would think that f by 16 is higher. But with the basic maths, f by 16, since being a, being a ratio, f by 16 will be a shorter number. So that's why shorter the f, that is lesser the f, higher the aperture. It means how it affects the shallow depth of field. Let me show you. What is shallow depth of field? Now, I'm going to put my hand in front of the lens. So as you can see, my palm is in focus and my face in the background is nice and blurry. Now, if I were to sh adjust my aperture to f16 or f22, my hand and my face would be at equal sharpness. Let's see how that looks. All right. So now I've set my camera to f22, but at the cost of increasing my ISO. We'll come back to ISO later. So now as you can see, the palm and my face, both are in focus. So this is what is aperture's second function. As the name says it all, shutter speed is the speed at which the shutter opens and shut. Now how does the camera work? Well, this image is going through my aperture, the shutter opens for about a second or whatever your setting you have done and that image then goes past the shutter, shuts down and that image is then projected onto the sensor. Whoa. So now let me explain shutter speed in this camera. Okay, so now what shutter speed does if you reduce the speed of the shutter, that is, you lower the shutter speed to gain that motion blur. Or when you have your camera on the tripod and it's too dark, you want to reduce that shutter speed so that there's more light which can be captured in that speed of the shutter, in that moment. Now let's see in what cases we want to increase the shutter speed. Let's say you want to shoot a moving car or let's say you want to, you want to shoot a kid who's running. You know, so you want to increase that shutter speed so that you want to reduce that motion blur and you want to capture that subject crisp and sharp. When you increase the shutter speed, shutter is going to close at a very high speed. So what do you want to do in those scenarios? There's only so much that you can uh, increase the shutter speed and increase your aperture. So let's say your camera is at the highest aperture, say f1.8 or 1.4, and you have increased your shutter speed to capture that uh, F1 car in the racing. But your image is coming very dark. So what do you want to do? So this is where ISO comes in. So ISO is basically when the image is already projected onto the sensor, the camera has a capability to brighten your image or darken your image. Now this is, you can call this like a fake light. Your image is brightened and you must be wondering, well, I can use uh, ISO, I can bump up the ISO whenever I want. Well, let me tell you that increasing the ISO will come at a cost. You're going to get a lot of grain in your image, which is also called as noise. 
which is not very pleasing in most of the situations. You can get rid of it in Photoshop or Lightroom, but then you wouldn't want that as a professional photographer. You wouldn't want that in your raw image. All right, guys, so just to show you what happens when you bump up the uh, ISO, I have set my camera to shutter speed of 4000. Okay. And my ISO is at the maximum that is 25,600. Okay. So now, as you can see in this video over here, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of grain which is moving randomly. So that is what is called noise. And that is what happens when you increase the ISO more than required. So now you've seen what happens when you really increase the ISO and you get all those noise, which is not required. Let me give you a tip. When you're shooting uh, high moving objects, like suppose wildlife, wildlife photography, and you want to shoot that bird which is flying. So in that case, you want to bump up your shutter speed to the maximum so that you don't want to miss the, the, the flight of that bird, the, the wings it's flapping, you know, you want to capture all that. So in that case, you might as well increase the ISO to the point where your image is coming bright because having an image is better than not having an image at all. So keep that in mind and don't just follow ISO setting to the T. Keep practicing these three settings and soon you will realize that you've been shooting on manual mode much better than on auto. All right guys, so that was it. That was the whole explanation of aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And I hope this video has helped you. If it has helped you in any way, do comment in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any of the videos which I'm uploading. Till then, take care.